Hello and welcome back. Before I begin, I'd like to give a big thank you to Wrath's Queen, Rory Phelan, and Sky Ciel for becoming my newest subscribers. Thank you so much, I really appreciate your taking the time. And now, on with the haul. As usual, this is going to be a haul from the Book Thing of Baltimore, a wonderful nonprofit that gives out free books every weekend. And um, you can find out more about them by visiting their website, www.bookthing.org. And I experienced a somewhat unusual phenomenon on this trip. Usually the, um, it's the, the place is divided into three rooms. And the first room you go into has the French books, the classics, and the science fiction fantasy books. And usually that's where I wind up doing the most damage. I just pile on a bunch of stuff at the beginning. This time, I was just not finding anything there, and it was kind of amazing, and in fact I was wondering if I going to even have any books to do a haul. But then I hit the fiction section in the second room, and well, as you will see, I have plenty of books, in fact, so don't despair. First, I got Alexandria, A History and a Guide by E.M. Forster. This was in the classics section, and this is in fact the only um, book I got out of that first room, because I was like, I gotta get something out of here. And I, I do like E.M. Forster, I think. I really like The Passage to India. And then I read A Room with a View and was not super crazy about that and have somehow managed not to read anything else of his, which is really sad because um, I have Howard's End and Where Angels Fear to Tread and those bo both look really good. So I do need to get back into him and um, who knows, maybe I'll even uh, read this one next. And then I was really excited to find this. This is The Dream Team by Joe McGinnis. Joe McGinnis is best known as a journalist or a, a nonfiction writer. And um, he wrote Fatal Vision, which is a famous true crime book. And he wrote a book about Alaska called Going to Extremes. And his most recent book was a con that controversial Sarah Palin biography. Haven't read anything of his, but he did write one novel. And this is it. And I wasn't even aware of its existence, except um, I was doing some shelf reading at the library and just came across it as I was um, looking at the shelves. And I thought, oh, this looks pretty interesting. This is a story of three hard luck people who converge on a racetrack and try to win big. I found I'd rather enjoy racetrack gambling novels. Um, two, two of my favorite kind of noir crime novels are The Art of Losing by Keith Dixon and Fake ID by Jason Starr, both of which revolve around skullduggery at the track. So I'm eager to give this one a try. And then we come to William Boyd. William Boyd is kind of an interesting study because he writes a lot of historical fiction and as you know I, be, I begin to think maybe I protest a little too much about my dislike of historical fiction because I feel like in almost every single one of these videos I'm saying I really don't like historical fiction but but um, anyway he writes a lot of historical fiction which is not my preferred genre and I've always been sort of meaning to give him a try but eh, you know but I've discovered recently that I really like a lot of his um, screenwriting work um, he's almost, it seems like he's almost becoming a successor to Andrew Davies, who is, or not that Andrew Davies is going anywhere, but who writes a ton of Masterpiece Theater type productions, and Boyd has started doing that, or has been doing that for a while actually, and he's also written a couple of feature films. So I've really liked that work of his, and I figured I owe it to him just to at least give him a try, and if I hate his work, I don't have to read any more of it, right? Um, I actually found a couple that are not historical fiction, um, On the Yankee Station and Stars and Bars, and then this one which is, which is A Good Man in Africa, and I, I actually really want to see the film version of this. It, for some reason, it came out when I was about, I think I was nine, I think it came out in 94, and just the poster is stuck in my head. I must have seen the poster in the newspaper or something. It came on TV a while ago and I taped it and haven't gotten around to watching it yet because I have about as much of a film backlog as I do of a book backlog. Although not quite as bad because I watch films more quickly than I um, read books. But I figured I might as well give the novel a try as well. And this is another one I'm a little doubtful about. This is Choke by Chuck Palahniuk. I've actually read a couple of his books. Um, 
Yeah, only, I've, I've, only, I've read only two. I saw the film version of Fight Club, which I wasn't that crazy about, although I love Helena Bonham Carter. And I like, the, basically, my, for me, Fight Club peaked towards the beginning when he's visualizing the cave with the penguin. I thought that was kind of cool, but after that, I don't know, it wasn't really my thing. Um, but so I, I saw, I just saw the film version of that. And, but I've read Haunted and Survivor. And I felt like both of those, there was some potential there, but they just wound up kind of falling flat for me. But I saw the film version of this one as well, of Choke, and I really rather liked it, so I figured this is going to be my last Chuck Palahniuk, really. I'm just going to read this one, and then, unless it's really, really great, and then I'm stuck doing trial and error, I guess. But this is it. Last one. And then I got to The Rachel Papers by Martin Amos. I was thinking, and I realized I have never read a Martin Amos novel all the way through. I read The War Against Cliché, which is his collection of essays, which I thought were pretty good all around. And I tried reading Yellow Dog, which at the time was his new novel. He's obviously written a lot since then and just couldn't really get into it. And I have a couple of his other novels sitting around, but I've never read one, which I suppose is rather a shame. But this one looked pretty good, so I decided to add it to my growing Martin Amos stack. But what's really cool about this, and here I am being shallow, but that's okay, is this is one of these great little, this is not a vintage contemporary, this is vintage international, which you can tell from their distinguished solid colored spines and the little um, vintage symbol at the bottom. And what's really exciting about this is that back in the day, although even back in the day I'm not sure they were ubiquitous, but they would have checklists in the back of all the Vintage International books. And nowadays, none of them have them. They have a handful of titles, of Vintage International titles they like to highlight, which is great. I've discovered a couple cool books that way. But um, they don't have the checklist. And this one has the checklist, which I will, this, I'm sure this is not nearly exciting for all, as exciting for all of you as it is for me, but they have the checklist. And it's, let's see, it's one, three, five, five pages long. It's a nice little Vintage International checklist. You can also see where somebody like spilled coffee on the book, which is kind of gross. Where you can check off the ones you've read and the ones you own, which as you can see I've already done. Um, so anyway, that was quite a find on a couple of counts. And then I was so excited to find this. This may be my most exciting find. This is Life During Wartime by Lucius Shepard. I've talked a little bit about Lucius Shepard before. In fact, I included his novel Trujillo in my favorite books I read in 2011 video. Um, so far that's still the only one I've read, but I'm really eager to read some more of his books and I, as will probably not surprise you, actually have a few already stacked up. And this, I almost missed getting this, which is kind of funny because it looks like, from the spine, it looks a lot like Lewis Shiner's novel, Deserted Cities of the Heart, which I also featured in my Favorites of 2011 video. So I, my, you know, when you're going through all these books, and they have thousands of books at the book thing, your eyes are sort of skimming, and you're not necessarily literally reading every single title and author. But fortunately, this my eyes passed over this a second time and jumped out. And this is supposed to be one of his best books. I think it's also the book that really put him on the map. And then I got The Lost City of Z by David Gran. This is nonfiction about an explorer who set off in the 20s into the Amazon um, and then disappeared and was never heard from again. And just stories like that I find really interesting. And plus I, plus I just saw Barbe Schroeder's film The Valley Obscured by Clouds, which is sort of a variation on that theme, and I really like that. And feeling kind of into it. And it looks like this guy used a fair number of primary sources and it's pretty well documented, so I'm eager to give this a read. Then I got The Buddha of Suburbia by Hanif Qureshi. I have rather a mixed record on Qureshi. I really did not like his collection of stories Love in a Blue Time, but I really loved his novel The Black Album. And this is supposed to be, this is the book that put him on the map, but I think it's supposed to be one of his best. And I've liked a lot of the later screenwriting work he'd done, he's done. I loved The Mother and um, I really liked Venus and plus I saw the, um, the British miniseries adaptation of this and rather liked it so I figured it's worth a try. 
Then I got Love Roger, a novel by Charles Webb. Charles Webb is one of those writers who was pretty popular um, at the time he was writing and now everybody knows his novel The Graduate just because the film is so famous but seems to have a bit fallen off the map. I have not read the novel The Graduate although I quite like the film except I think he would have done better just staying with Mrs. Robinson but yeah that's just my opinion. Um, but still a good film. But I read Webb's novel The Marriage of a Young Stockbroker which I really rather liked and so I'm eager to explore the rest of his oeuvre. Then I got this novel The Ring by Koji Suzuki. This is apparently the novel on which the film was based, the, the original Japanese horror film and then the American remake, neither of which I've seen, but it sounds like an interesting story. And then I got this novel Style and Substance by Judith Martin, who is probably best known as the author of the Miss Manners column, which I've read since I was a little kid and just adore. I read her earlier novel Gilbert, which I really rather hated, um, but I'm hoping this one will be a little better. And then I got Hallucinating Foucault, a novel by Patricia Dunker. This just sounds interesting, it's supposed to be really good, and I find all those deconstructionists rather fascinating, although I often find their ideas a little bit silly. And then I got Henry James's Midnight Song, a novel by Carol DeShellis Hill. This is another historical, and as we know, not a big fan of historical fiction, but this is just an author I've been really eager to try for a while, and this is the one they had, so what the heck. Then I got Winner of the National Book Award by Jinsey Willett. Um, I read Willett's, I think her most recent novel, it was published a few years ago, called The Writing Class, which I just loved. It was funny and kind of scary. And it was a mystery novel where I actually guessed the ending, which is always a nice little ego boost because I'm usually not very good at that. And so I decided to track down her earlier work. I'm a little leery of this one. This is Outside Providence by Peter Farrelly. And I tried to watch this film and just it wasn't really my thing, but I thought the novel might be a little bit better. And then I got Scott Himes' novel, We Disappear. And I'm not sure if that's a Metallica reference or a Bretty Stanellis reference, but maybe I will find out by reading this. I think I've talked about Scott Heim before. I read his novel Mysterious Skin, and although I wasn't blown away by it, I thought it was kind of interesting, and I also liked the film, so I'm eager to check out the rest of his work. And then I got this novel, Dr. Mirabilis, by James Blish. This is really weird. The previous owner of this book sort of hand wrote Merry Christmas Sim and Anne 1975 Connie but wrote it like in the same font as the jacket which is kind of creative and a little disturbing but um, this is part of James Blish's trilogy which includes Black Easter and The Day After Judgment. I think, I think it's part of a trilogy. I'm not sure exactly which books make up the trilogy but um, it's his um, fictional explorations of ceremonial magic which is kind of interesting. And actually, the, the one I really want to read is Black Easter, but I figure beggars can't be choosers. And last but not least, this is Dreamland by Newton Thornburg. I'm not really sure what this is. I mean, I know it's a novel, but um, Thornburg wrote a couple of other novels that were made into pretty interesting films. He wrote Cutter and Bone, which was made into the film Cutter's Way, and he wrote Beautiful Kate. And so I figured it's worth um, giving at least something he's written to try, even if I have no idea what it is. And if you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me for my next video.